Hey, YouTube fam, it's Dana Shea. It's been a minute since I've done a video. I am just fired up right now. And I was like, I got to turn my camera on and talk about this. I got this question from a listener on my podcast, which if you've never listened to the show before, it's called Rebuilding Us. And this listener wrote in because he said that he has been married for over 30 years and they have not had sex in over a year. Wait, what? He is in a sexless marriage. Now, if you follow my channel or if you maybe stumbled upon another video of mine talking about sexless marriage, I did that video like six years ago, and I will link to it in this video today. But I want you to stay put because I'm going to talk about this from a fresh perspective. In that old video, I really defined what a sexless marriage was. Today, I really want to help those of you all who feel like you are in a sexless marriage. So just real quick to define it again, if you are in a marriage where you are having sex less than 12 times a year which is about less than once a month, you're in a sexist marriage. So I want to talk about this first and foremost from a Christian perspective. So if you follow my channel, you already know that, but I don't want this to just be my opinion. I really want to talk to you all about what the word of God says. And it's so interesting that we think sometimes the Bible is so outdated and like, I don't know if I can really get with all of that, but I want to tell you that this verse right here, you've probably not ever heard this verse preached in your churches. And it's out of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3 and 4. I'm going to read it to you. It says, the husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband. Let's just pause right there. Did God really call sex a duty? Yes, he did. So this is the deal. And I'm going to, we're not done. I'm just pausing here because I got to talk about that word duty. It's funny when my kids were little, they'd be like, she said duty. <laughs> but the funny thing is a lot of times we talk about things that are fun and enjoyable and both uh, parties want to participate in. It's mutually beneficial, right? Sex is one of those things that might not always be fun or it might not always be convenient, but it is your duty. There are other things that your spouse does for you that they might not always want to do, like paying bills or cooking or taking care of a house, but they do them because that's their duty. I don't know why we think that sex is an optional thing. Like, that's just not what the word says, all right? It goes on to say that the wife's body does not belong to her alone, but also to her husband. In the same way, the husband's body does not belong to him alone, but also to his wife. Now, listen, this is this is the word of God, okay? I Like, I'm not making this up, all right? I want you all to know something, because in the world that we live in today, we're taught by the media, by culture, by the government, that this is my body. I can do whatever I want to do with my body. But that's not what the word says. The word actually says that if you are a Christian, your body is not your own. Your body is actually the temple of the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. So this whole notion of I get to do whatever I want, say what I want, go what I want, do whatever it is with whomever it is I want, that's not biblical. And if you're married, not only does your body belong to the Lord, but it also belongs to your spouse. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know that that goes against everything that you've been taught or that you feel. But we, if we're going to be Christians, we're going to have to be real Christians and we're going to have to listen to what the word of God says. So that does not mean that consensual sex just goes out of the window when you get married. I am not for marital rape, which is a thing. I am not for anyone forcing themselves on their spouse, which does happen. That is not right. But this whole idea that if I feel like having sex with my spouse, I will. If I don't feel like having sex with my spouse, then I won't. That's selfish. And it's actually ungodly. So I want to be able to give those of you who are in sexless marriages, I want to give you some pointers. First, I want to talk to the spouse who you are the one who will not have sex with your spouse. You are the one who will not have sex with your spouse. You're the one who you're too tired, you're hurt, you're not into your spouse for whatever reason or another. Um, I want to talk to you. OK, and I'm going to be just straight up like I don't know any other way to be. So I'm just going to be straight up. I'm not going to hurt your feelings, but I do want to encourage you that you're going to have to ask the Lord to renew your mind according to his word. 
because I understand that we all have reasons for why we do what we do, right? None of us just wakes up one day and says, you know, I want to destroy my marriage today. But that is in essence what's happening. Because when you choose not to engage with your spouse physically, you are setting them up for all kinds of things. Now, is that their responsibility to remain faithful in the marriage? Absolutely. I will never give a spouse an out for cheating on their spouse just because their other their spouse wasn't having sex with them. Like That's not what I'm saying here. But you can open them up to all kinds of other things too, like anxiety, depression, feeling worthless. You can open them up to temptation. You can open them up to porn addiction. You could open them up to things other than an affair. And if that is you over here and you're saying, you know, I'm just, I just don't feel my spouse. I just, I'm not attracted to him or her. I just, you know, I don't need sex. A lot of people are just like, I don't really need it. So if you're in a marriage, it's not just about you. So I want you to think about the reasons because sometimes we suspend our logic when we don't feel like doing something. We just suspend our logic. We're just like, I I don't know. I just don't feel like doing it. But I want you to think about what are the reasons that are keeping you from engaging with your spouse? And then I want you to have a conversation with your spouse because they are hurting over there. Oh, they might act like it's not bothering them or maybe they're angry at you, right? Because they don't know how to tell you. Remember, anger is always a secondary emotion. They don't know how to tell you what's really going on. So maybe they're showing that is anger. But I want you to initiate a conversation with your spouse as to why you have not been engaging. I'm going to say something, and again, this is not to offend you, but not having sex with your spouse is cruel. You are the only person who can meet your spouse's sexual need. You're the only person. If your spouse is lonely and they need friendship, they can have friends. They can have children who might feel that that companionship need or that that affection need. If your spouse has financial needs, they can get that need met. They can go get a job or they can borrow money or they can do whatever it is that they do. But if your spouse has a sexual need, you're it. You're the only one. And so to not fulfill that is just cruel, especially when you have not sought help when you have not tried to rectify whatever the situation is over here that's keeping you from engaging. You might not want to hear that, but I'm going to always be honest with you. You can be sure of that, okay? Now, to the spouse over here, the one who you're not getting sex. What's going on here? Your spouse is withholding for whatever reason and you can't figure it out. I want to encourage you to have a conversation. So I'm telling both people to initiate. Who's going to initiate? I don't know. Tag, you're it. Go first. Both of these conversations are going to take courage. But I think over here, it's probably going to take a little bit more courage because you face even more rejection. What if I go to my spouse and they just don't want to talk to me or they say something that's really hurtful? They say something that's really painful. That is a risk. But we can't keep living like this in silence. It isn't healthy. And speaking of healthy, when I'm talking about this in the broader sense, sex and marriage, I am not talking to spouses who are physically disabled for whatever reason, okay? So please don't put in the comments, what if I have a condition that this conversation isn't for you, okay? If you have some sort of physical condition that is preventing you, and that physical condition cannot be called tired, okay? It has to be a real physical condition. So if that is you, I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about in a healthy marriage where two healthy people are in a marriage, this should be happening frequently, okay? Now, how frequently? That's up to you and your spouse. You guys got to come to agreement on that. It can't just be, well, I want to have sex every day, so that's what we're going to do. Or, well, I only want to have sex once a month, so that's what we're going to do. You guys have got to come together and talk about this. And remember that being married, it's not just about you. You've got to be able to come to an understanding. All right, let me tell you a couple more things, and then we're going to be done today. I want to encourage you all, when you are having these conversations about sex, we need to understand that men and women are different. Oh, I know, again, culture says, oh, gender norms, gender roles, blah, 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 blah. Men and women are different, okay? And if you don't believe that, then you must not be married to a opposite gender person because we are different. And I'm speaking in generalizations here, okay? I know that there are going to be some men who are like, no, that's actually not me, or some women who are like, no, I'm the opposite. But in general, in general, most men 
need physical connection before they can engage in emotional connection. And women are exactly the opposite. Most women need emotional connection before they can engage in physical connection. What does that mean? If you are a woman, you need conversations. You need to spend quality time with your man before you can just like jump in the sheets. Now, I know that there are some hypersexual women who are like, I don't care. He has to talk to me. He has to look my way. I just want to have sex. That's not the norm for most women. There are some women who are like that. If that's you, great. But most women aren't like that. Most women need some sort of emotional intimacy, something. Give me a a hug, have a conversation, ask me how my day was, ask me what my dreams are, engage me emotionally first, then I will engage you physically, okay? And then most men do not want to have long, drawn-out conversations with you before sex. Most men don't want to have those conversations at all, but certainly not if they're not getting sex. So I love the fact that God created us this way. I think it keeps us dependent on each other. It keeps us meeting each other's needs. And listen, it is time out, you guys, for us operating our marriages the way that society tells us to. Do you want that divorce rate that society has? Do you want the type of marriages that we see in these celebrity marriages? If you do, then keep doing what they're doing. But if you want something different, y'all have been married for 25 years. And I'm going to tell you something. I know (laughs) I got married when I was five. But listen, I'm going to tell you something. I don't have a marriage, the marriage that I have today, it's not because I'm looking at what are what are people out there doing and what's, no, no, no. I'm like, I don't want to do what they're doing because what they're doing isn't working. So I'm telling you today what works. I'm telling you that if you're going to have a long standing marriage, you're going to have to give up some things that you might not want to give up. You're going to have to sacrifice sometimes. You're going to have to do some things that, you know, are inconvenient. And if sex is your issue and you are not having sex, maybe you just you just don't like it. Like some people just don't like sex. And I think that there's a million reasons why. I think that those things can be fixed in a good coaching session. We can go and we can talk about, okay, like what? where did that come from? What is the root of that? And let's get to the root of that because I believe that sex can be very fulfilling for everyone. But then there are other people who maybe you don't know how, or maybe you feel awkward, or maybe there's some hygiene issues. There's a lot of reasons why people do not like to engage. So I'm not saying that there aren't valid reasons why you don't like to engage. What I'm saying is that there are no valid reasons that you choose not to engage. Because if there is an issue going on with your spouse and you have not told him or her, that's on you. If you've never had that conversation with them, that's on you. So I want you to have the conversations together. That is going to take courage. And if you're thinking, you know what, Dana, I know I need to have this conversation, but this is really awkward, then I want to give you a resource that's going to help you. I love conversation starters because if you just go to your spouse with like, hey, let's talk about such and such, they're going to be like, what, what? I want to be able to give you a resource that's going to help you to have these conversations. So if you go to danashay.com forward slash conversation starters, you will be able to start having these conversations more freely and more frequently with your spouse. You can find more information about all the things that I do on my website at danashay.com. If you need coaching, you can find that on the website. And of course, I want you to make sure that you're subscribed to and listening to the podcast. I'll link to all of that in the description below. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you on the next video. Take care.